What is going on guys, it's Modern Warfare here and welcome back to another video. So in this video I'm going to be giving you guys a detailed look at the other console tools in Apparition Net Studio. I've already done uh, a detailed video on the file manager and console manager and I've also done a general overview video which gives you an idea of everything that's in the application. So go ahead and check that out. I'll put a playlist link in the description to where you can find all the videos I've made on Apparition Net Studio so far. And also, um, if you'd like to purchase the software, it, there's a link in the description to where you can do that. There'll also be a link to the Apparition Net Studio website in there as well. So yeah, let's have a detailed look now at the other console tools. And I'll start off with the network sniffer because I think that's the one that um, maybe most people will be interested in. Which Now, the network sniffer is basically like an advanced IP pooler. So the idea behind that is when you're in a game, you can grab the IP addresses of every player in your game, whereas our network sniffer is a bit more advanced, it also grabs the MAC address, machine ID, XUID, online port and local IP, and it also works on the Halo games as well, Halo 3, Halo Reach and Halo 4 are supported um, in our network sniffer as well. So I'll need to search for a game in order to show you this. Now bear in mind, I am going to be blurring out other people's IPs, so I'll try and not blur it to the point where you can at least see that <laughs> it is working and it is changing. But I don't want to, you know, have other people's IP addresses shown in this video. Um, so I'm not going to, to show you that, obviously. But I am going to just hop into a team deathmatch right here on Black Ops 2. And we'll have a look. So I'm in a game, uh, I'm in a lobby right now. So I'll grab clients. So that's grabbing all the people in my game. And as I'm selecting them, their IP addresses are changing. So I will have this blurred out. But you should be able to at least see that they are changing and I won't blur out my own one so I'll select my own one right here. So this is me, armed ketchup 945 just a generic account I created a while ago. And we've got the local IP, that is my local IP, in fact you'd be able to tell just by opening up the console manager and you can see my IP is 137.91 which is what's on here, 137.91 so it gives you the local IP my external IP. Now I am on a VPN as well, just so that people watching this video don't get my real um, IP address. And so there's my IP address, the VPN I'm on right now. You've got the online port 3074. You've got the XUID of the gamer of the Xbox profile I'm signed into. You've got the machine ID of my console. I might actually blur that one out, to be honest. I'm not sure um, because I, I'm pretty sure you can do some fucked up shit if you have someone's machine ID. And then you've got the MAC address of my console as well, which again, I might blur out, depends. Um, but you can see that. And you can also double click a specific user and it will grab extra information. So you can see, again, this is the information on my VPN because I'm not on my normal connection right now, I'm on a VPN. And I'll, in fact, just to show you as proof again, where are we, where's my VPN? There it is. So you can see I'm on a Netherlands server on my VPN right now and it says Amsterdam, Netherlands. Uh, you've got North Holland and then there's the zip. It also gives you the ISP and the longitude and latitude coordinates which you can then look up on Google Maps. If you select look up on Google Maps, it will go ahead and look up that area. There you go, Amsterdam. It will go ahead and look that up on Google Maps. So that's our advanced IP pooler slash network sniffer, etc. And again, this works on the Call of Duty games, Halo 3, Halo Reach, and Halo 4. Okay, so that is the network sniffer, and you can also access that from within other games. So if I go into a game like Modern Warfare 3, you can see you can access the network sniffer from here. If you, if you don't want to access it through the launcher. So that's the network sniffer. We've also got a key vault checker. So the way the key vault checker works is you can open a specific key vault. So if I select open individual key vault, Okay, and then I can select a specific key vault. And you can say it's you can see it says your key vault is unbanned. So that's basic KV checker, but you can also open a key vault folder. So if I select this folder right here and then click OK, this folder is full of key vaults, it will check every single key vault, or it'll ask you if you want to check every single key vault. If I say yes. It's going to check them all. They should all be banned apart from one. And there you go. Once it's checked all the key vaults, it gives you a little icon to notify the ones that are banned and the ones that are not banned. As you can see, I only have one key vault that isn't banned. These are all old key vaults that have been banned. So you can do that. 
So you can also generate a log. So you can select the serial number, drive data, time and date and save. And then I'll just call this uh, log.txt. And then if I go in here, we should now have our log file, which has got all the key vaults along with their serial numbers and whether or not they're banned or not. You got all that extra information, time that they were checked, there's their drive model, etc. So that's the key vault checker, guys. And then we've also, moving on, we've got, uh, so we've already gone over the file manager. So we've got the module debugger. Now what this does is it allows you to um, basically inject plugins and XCX files uh, straight into the console and run them rather than having to, you know, say, uh, add it as a dash launch plugin. This is useful if you're already using all five plugins in dash launch. You can add a sixth plugin by just injecting it straight from your computer with the module debugger. It's also handy if you're developing maybe a mod menu or something and you keep generating new XEX files to test. You don't want to have to add them as a plugin and reboot the console every time you want to test something that you've updated. You can just go ahead and inject the XEX file straight from the computer. And then you can also dump um, XEX files from the console to the computer as well. So if I wanted to um, dump something like uh, HUD.XEX, I don't know how big that is though, it might be quite a large XEX file. But if I wanted to dump that to the, uh, to the computer, I can just double click it, dump module to PC, select the desktop, and that dumps that XEX file to the computer right there. Okay, so that is the module debugger. Then you've got Update Studio. Now, Update Studio, again, is more designed for developers and um, for people who are wanting to quickly get an updated XEX file for a game. So I believe we're on Black Ops 2 right now. So let's say I wanted to get the latest patched XEX file for Black Ops 2. So that's a default.xex that's patched with the latest title update uh, so that you can get the latest offsets or whatever for that. So the quickest way to do this normally if you did not have Apparition Net Studio would be to use um, probably Xbox 360 Neighborhood and then you'd have to uh, head into the active title game. So you would obviously go on Black Ops 2. We're using Black Ops 2 as an example. So you go on Black Ops 2 and get the update from Xbox Live or if you're offline you would go on Aurora and get the title update from the title update manager and then go on the game and then you'd have to go to the active title game directory like we're in right now scroll down till you find say the default mp.xcx to update transfer that to your computer then you'd have to go to your volume update which is the title update that's running on the game at the moment and then find the patch file the default mp.xcxp then extract that so then you'd have to go on xcx tool gui so you'd have to run xcx tool and then of course you'd have to open the default.xcx in here and then the xp file in here and then you'd have to select a save location and then click the button to patch it. That's what you'd have to do just to get a patched XEX normally. And just to give you an example of this, um, get rid of the patch file right now. So this is the normal default MP.XEX not updated. You can see it's 9.89 megabytes. So the way that Update Studio works is it lets you update it and it does everything by itself pretty much. You just have to go on the game on the latest title update, whether you do that from Xbox Live or from Aurora's title update manager, just go on the game and make sure it's patched with the latest title update. So you're on the game on the latest title update, open up the update studio, select next, select the, it'll list here all the XEX files that are um, in your current game directory. So we've got the default.xex and MP, so select the uh, XEX files you want to update, select next, select a location on the computer to store it. So I'll just select my desktop. And all modules updated, click finish. It'll output the updated XEX file to your desktop. And you can see that's 10.6 megabytes. So that is the default MP.XEX patched with TU18, the latest title update for Black Ops 2. And that's it. You didn't have to use XEX tool. You didn't have to get the patch file and patch it. it does it all for you. So that is basically the up, the update studio. Okay, so that's pretty much it. All we have left is the settings. So the settings, you've got a theme changer. Now you can change your theme. So if I apply theme, you can see I'm changing different themes. Not all themes are going to necessarily work properly. Obviously, um, we've designed the application using a specific theme and some other themes kind of change the, the layout. That one's not bad actually. Um, some change the layout slightly 
Um, so, you know, certain... There's one particular theme that completely destroys it. Uh, this one, I think it is. So you can see that kind of screws it up. So not all themes are going to um, are going to work properly with the tool, but a lot of themes will work absolutely fine. And if you're not happy with the theme that we're using, which is Visual Studio 2013 Dark, then you've got a big list of other themes that you can select, uh, whichever one you prefer. So that's the theme changer. Then you've got, uh, okay, so settings, so you can uncheck auto login from there. Then you've also got the ability to change your password or CPU key. As noted down here, it says your CPU key can only be changed once. We do allow you to change your CPU key once for free if your console breaks or something like that, or um, whatever, you got a new console, then you can change your CPU key once. The way you do that is you click change password or CPU key and this will open the customer panel in your browser. So then you just have to type in the username and password that you would use to sign into Apparition Net, the actual tool itself, and then log in. And from here, you'll be able to update your CPU key. Again, you can only do this once. Once you've done it once, it will not let you do it again. Um, you can also add your AIM uh, username or email address in here, uh, which makes it easier for us to contact you for any reason um, or for you to contact us. And then, of course, you can also change your account password um, at any point. You, there's no limit to how many times you can change your password. So that is the customer panel. And then you've just got stuff about the software, our partners, uh, KV Seller Nice Mods. We put him in here because he has helped us out a ton with just giving us key vaults whenever we needed to get online um, to test AppNet and work on the application. Highly recommend him as a KV seller. So that is it. That's the settings on Apparition Net Studio. That's our uh, that's all the console tools we have in at the moment. So obviously there's more stuff we'll be adding in the future and of course we've already covered the console manager which has a bunch of options as well. Um, so go ahead and check that video out if you haven't already and the file manager because we've got a good amount of videos on that but that's the console tools guys I'll have more videos on Apparition Net Studio covering the Call of Duty tools the Halo tools the other games as well uh, coming pretty soon so thanks for watching and go ahead and leave a like if you like the video subscribe if you haven't subscribed already comment if you have any questions the link to purchase Apparition Net Studio is in the description along with all the other links you're going to need um, such as the playlist link for all the other videos I've made on Apparition Net Studio so far and the link to the website for Apparition Net Studio as well. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Shuffling